this video, we're going to build a floating labels form example. And to do this, we're going to leverage the sibling selector peer variant in Tailwind CSS. All right, so here's a simple sign-in form example, which has two fields, an email address, and a password field. Instead of using proper labels, we're using placeholders here to inform the user on what they should do with this field. That creates some problems in terms of accessibility and also in terms of user experience. So since placeholders only show when the field is empty, if I fill the form, and here it's not really a big problem, but you can see that we don't see what the fields are supposed to be anymore. So on a longer form with lots of fields, say your cat would step on your keyboard. Ah, get out of here, you. You can see that if you wanted to review the fields before sending the form, this is not quite clear as per what sort of field it should be. So what we're going to do in this video is use real label elements and try to stick to a similar minimal design, but bring some improvements in terms of user experience. So let's start working on the first field. And what we're going to do is add a label to this input. So we're going to create a label. And for the for attribute here, we're going to match the ID of the input. So email. And the text will say email address. So you can see the label here now. And what we want to do is make the label look just like the placeholder, but only if the placeholder is here. So when the user starts typing, you can see the placeholder is gone. And then we want the label to move up here, probably a bit smaller, a bit lighter gray, etc. So when you want to check if a field is empty or not, uh, an implementation that you would see quite often is using a bit of JavaScript to check if the value of the input field is empty. But there's a way of doing this with just CSS using the placeholder shown pseudo class. And because we want to style the label differently if the input has the placeholder showing, we're going to use a sibling selector. And for this, we're going to use the peer variant. Essentially, our input element here is going to be the peer element that we want to listen to for the placeholder shown state. So I'm going to add a class of peer to it. And so now I can try to come in my label element. And I say try because this is not going to work just yet, but I can use the peer dash placeholder shown variant. And let's say we want to make the text uppercase for this label if the input has the placeholder showing. So as you can see, the placeholder is showing and our label is not in uppercase and typing and having the field empty or not doesn't change anything. And the reason it's not working is our peer placeholder shown class here is looking for a sibling selector with the class of peer before it in the document. So here's our label element and there is no sibling element before it. The element with the peer class is sitting after and for that reason, uh, this is not working. So what we can do is grab a label, cut it and paste it after our input. So it's still a sibling and it hits after. And obviously the position has moved, but you can see that the label is now in uppercase. And as soon as I start typing, it responds to this placeholder shown state of the input and updates, which is really cool. All right, so we're going to tackle this backwards and first take care of the styles for the label when the placeholder is not showing for the input. So I'm gonna get rid of this peer placeholder shown uppercase class for now. And first thing we're going to do is handle the positioning of this label. So you can see that on the wrapper here, we have a class of relative. So we can give an absolute class to our child here, absolute. And we're going to go with left zero and top zero. As you can see, we need a little bit more space here. So we're going to go with minus top 3.5. Nice. We are also going to change the color a bit with text gray 600 and the size with text small. That's essentially how we want the label to look when the field is not empty. And now we're going to apply changes to how it should look when the placeholder is actually shown because the field is empty. So once again, I'm going to go with the peer placeholder shown variant. And so if the field is empty, I want the text to be bigger, text base, peer placeholder shown. I also want it to be a lighter gray, so text gray 400. All right, so let's have a look if it works. All right, so it looks like it's working. You can see that the text is bigger and lighter gray, but if I start typing in my field, it gets smaller. And let's add one more peer placeholder shown class. And this one is going to move the top property to two. 
And look at this, we're really close. So now the placeholder and labels are overlapping. If I change the text here to john at doe.com, you will see that these are overlapping. So that's obviously not great. And because we have now created a label that explains what the field is, we probably don't want to show the actual placeholder. So you think, well, cool, I can just get rid of the placeholder. But now, as you can see, even if the field is empty, our styles are always applied as if the placeholder was not showing because it is not showing, it's not there. So let's bring back a placeholder. And you might think, well, let's have an empty string. Nope, still the same problem. And what we can do here is add a utility class that styles the color of the placeholder. So I'm going to go with placeholder dash transparent. And so now we're going to make the placeholder invisible, but still shown. And check it out, it's taking shape now. So we have our label here that looks just like the placeholder. Here it's still a placeholder. But then when we start typing, it moves away. I'm quickly going to add a transition class. And here we're going to use transition all. So the color and size and everything changes. And so now when I start typing, we have this nice effect of the label, which looks like a placeholder moving into its top position. Great. So that's really cool. A slight UX improvement that we could make here is when we focus initially into the field before uh, there's any content, so the placeholder is still showing, so like so, that would be nice to still have the label move up and get out of the way to give us some space to type. So to do this, I'm going to use another peer variant and this is going to be the peer focus. Peer focus. And basically here we want to replicate the placeholder is not showing uh, type of styling. So I want to apply top 3.5, text gray 600, and text small when we're focused. So I'm gonna go minus top 3.5, and I'm also going to go peer, focus, text, gray 600, and peer, focus, text, small. And so if I focus inside my field, you can see that the text goes away. So now it's really nice, I come in my form field, and I can have a clear label and some room to type my email address. Beautiful. So as a quick recap, we're going to go through the same thing for the second field, which is still currently using a placeholder. All right, so here's our password input. I'm going to give it a class of peer. And then below it, we're gonna have our label. And for the four attribute, this one is going to be password. So we need an ID of password here. And now let's go style this label. So the parent here will have a relative class so that on our label, we can go with absolute. And remember, we wanna go with left zero and minus top 3.5. We want the text to be gray 600 and text small. And that text should say password. Here it is. And I think that the new label style up here warrants a little bit more spacing between the two fields. So maybe I'll move from empty six to empty 10. And so that's our style for the label when the field is not empty and the placeholder is not showing. Before I forget, I'll come in the input here and add the transparent placeholder class, placeholder transparent. And now let's come in our label and handle the peer variance. So peer placeholder shown and I will copy this in my clipboard since I'll use it a few times. So we want to go with text base. We want to go with text gray 400 and we want to go with top two. That looks pretty good. We want a transition all class to make it smooth. And the last thing we need to handle is the situation where we focus into the field before we type and we want this label to shoot up there, just like it's the case up here. And so for this, we're going to go with peer focus. Again, I'll copy that. And we want to replicate these three classes. So I will go minus top 3.5, peer focus, text gray 600, and peer focus, text small. And let's give it a try and we'll compare with the first field, simon at hello.com and the second field, very nice. And so now we have a form that still looks in a similar design but has a slightly better user experience. 
and also better accessibility because we're using real label elements instead of relying on placeholders. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.